All right, hey, I'm gonna show you guys some of my Illustrator techniques about how I um, use Illustrator to ink in a drawing. This is a Mike Diodato page that I got from Glasshouse Graphics. And first thing you do is you drop in, you know, create a file of 11 by 17 in Illustrator. Don't worry about pixels because Illustrator doesn't worry about pixels. And uh, what I did was I go ahead and say dim image to 50%. Actually, I'm turning it off so you can see the difference. And waiting for it to update. There we go. See, that's the original pencil scan. See how it's kind of darker? Well, I usually work with it. I, I started working with it this dark, and then I thought to myself, eh, it's so much nicer to work with it so much lighter. Because then you can actually see the length the pencils are, and you aren't. So dim it to 50. There you go. And you see you get that little grayed out area. Now, the first step I always notice to do, once you get the file set up and everything's all going well, First thing I like to do is decide, am I going to make this a line or a shape? The other, the other major decision is, whoa, I never noticed that before. Huh. Well, this would be a good, good thing I can show you here. I want to demonstrate the technique of how to do, how, to, how you actually interpret pencils. Because this is something that took me a while to get a hold of and actually was a dis subject of much discussion on a online forum, which is how do you uh, pencil somebody's, I mean ink somebody's pencils? How accurate do you go? And I made the mistake when I first started out, and I'll show you here, of being too literal. Let me turn off the original. So that's the original pencils. And I drew it like this. As you can see, every stroke is exactly how the pencil strokes are. See, it's just a dark in the pencil. You can see it's very sloppy. But what you have to ask yourself is what was the artist's intent? What was he trying to say with all these lines? I mean, look at this line right here. This line is way messy. And this line here is way messy. He was basically trying to describe, oh, I want to do it, draw an oval, oval shape because his eye is not looking right at you, so it's slightly ovular. And so you correct those mistakes. You, you go back in and you put it correct. So that's the original version I did that was you know, too accurate to the pencil. And then of course what you do is you improve it by doing stuff like this. As you can see, I cleaned it up, made the oval clean. You can see there's, there's pencil lines peeking out where the messiness is, but that's because the artist didn't clean it up. And that's where you clean it up in the inks. So as you can see, you got all that cleaned up. I put a circle temple, temple template. Um, as you can see, there's a lot, couple of things where the lines aren't quite lined up, but that's fine because if the lines, if you look at the original lines, you can see right here, this one's like way out to here, and this one's way over here. So I just made the adjustment to balance it out so the lines are more even and regular, like that. And so you, you make those little corrections. Like, for example, here, these shading lines go past the lip. I didn't think that looked right, so I took them out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shade the lower lip here, because I forgot I hadn't done that yet. And as you can see, those lines, like this line here is way too close to this line. This line's too wide. But let me show you a basic technique of how I do that. Zoom in really good. And the good thing about doing Illustrator is, um, and a lot of people say, oh, you don't do Illustrator because Illustrator, um, Illustrator will take, uh, Illustrator isn't the best one to do this with. Usually the best software to use, best software to use would be Manga Studio or um, some other software. I don't know. I've always used Illustrator. I've known it for 10 years. So um, here we go. This is what I do. Let me zoom in real quick. And this is a good thing about Illustrator. You can go really tight in and not lose any resolution. So I just click there, click a point, click there, make another point. Click here, make another point. Why is, oh, there it goes. Click here, click here, click here, here. And I'm just making a chain. This is because I find out it's so much better to do a chain of lines than to like come back and make a corrections on the lines later. And I'm going to turn off the shit colors first so I can see what I'm doing. And I want to do another line here to here. And then another line starting here to here. Yeah, that's right. And then there's another parallel line from here to here. Now you might ask, why did I do all this line if it's not going to be used? Well, Rather than sitting there drawing each line individually and have to come back and delete this, that, and the other, what I've done is make a chain and go back to here. I'm going to colorize that chain. 
And I noticed that when you start out Illustrator, it always wants to put them as this off black color. I think it has something to do with the way that the color filters work. So I just reset to, to all zeros, make it completely a black line. I think that has something to do with, like I said, the way the Illustrator is set up for color, to get accurate colors. It puts it off black because it knows that on your monitor it'll look off black, but it'll print black. I don't know. All I know is I don't like that. I want it to be pure black until the printer is ready to print it, then they can calibrate it later. Because this is by no means any ready, ready, going to be ready for print. It's going to be colored first and then printed. So I've drawn a whole, huge squiggly line. Now, I set it to 25, the thinnest line possible with Illustrator. You know, you usually can scroll up. That's another thing I found out. You can't scroll up. If you click on the field and then scroll up with your fingers, all it does is put it to zero instead of the smallest size. And that annoys me. So you have to manually set that. Okay. What I do is I switch to the point addition tool, add a point between the line I don't need, delete it. Click there, delete it. This way I can make one giant line and modify it later. And what this is doing is this is actually making several line segments now. And do it in sequence so it won't accidentally uh, um, it will accidentally uh, delete your lines. There's another one right there. And one more right there. So now I've got all these different line segments. And I should have done something earlier, and I made a huge mistake, which was I should have made these rounded. I almost always use rounded lines. It just looks better. So go here, make sure your stroke's showing, switch to rounded tips. There we go. Now, actually, I think I can safely increase that to uh, 50, maybe 75. Now, 75 thinks too thick. I'll make the decision if I want to go to 75. Always draw, I always find out it's better to draw the lines smaller and then go back and tweak them later. Now, at this point, I usually like to turn the background off so I can see the lines better. And see the lines as our own lines rather than get them confused. Now, here's a, here's a classic example where to fix things. Scoot that in. Scoot that up underneath that. And also notice this is too tight here and too wide here. So I'm going to grab this point, drag it here, and... I grab this point and drag it more this way and snag this part and drag it this way a little bit and there we go and I might go ahead and correct this and say okay this is gonna go to here he just penciled that in a hurry probably and grab this and do the same so as you can see I'm just making little tiny corrections to things that I don't know probably could be tweaked the way they should be like this one Tweak it back that way just for clarity because there's a lot of lines that are just like you don't know where they're going to and see, now these are all going the same direction, pretty much. Although this one, I might go ahead and set on that pocket. Yeah, like that. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. Now these, these lines are a little confusing, so let me try and deactivate that for a second and put on the colors again. See what I was trying to say with that? Because you literally, at this point, you're trying to see what you're doing, what you're trying to say with different things. Oh, uh, like this one. Um, yeah, I need one more line in there. That's okay. I'll put this one right here. There we go. And now these four lines are going to constitute a different shading. If I grab it. I think it's doing funny things because I'm doing video and audio capture while I'm doing Illustrator, and I'm sure that's probably not a great idea for keeping your computer running smoothly. So I've got f two sets of pair of lines. These four here, and then these bunch here. There we go. Now I'm going to back up and see if I like the way that the weight of those. 
Eh, that's not bad. I'm going to leave it alone for right now. The lines look slightly curved in the actual drawing. I don't know if I'm going to do that. That's one thing I'm going to make a quick evaluation of. I'm going to turn off the original pencil. Turn off, I mean, turn off the original, turn off my new lines. Yeah, they do look kind of nice curved. These set are curved, so I'm going to go ahead and curve them. Yeah, great notification. Thank you for that. Grab this tool. This is the good thing about this tool. Uh, Illustrator is way too sensitive sometimes. Shut up. <laughs> Illustrator is way too darn sensitive sometimes. If you don't click it in exactly the right point, it's like, oh, you didn't do it right. You're a fail. And it's just kind of a shame because if you can't find the point, yeah. <laughs> you really can't see what you're doing sometimes. And that's the one thing that grieves me about Illustrator. And even if you do see it and you click on the right point, it'll sometimes tell you, oh, wrong point again. Sorry you're so stupid. And you click the right one after all. The other good thing is about this is if I do a curved line on these, it's going to interpret the lower curve of the lip better. Because see, the lines are curving up underneath the lip, so they're going to curve up to the lip, where the lip is. And then same thing with these. So it's going to describe a better curve of the lip, which I think would be better for these lines. Now, as you can see, the curves are not exactly even, but that's where I'm going to come back with the tool and fine tweak them. I'm going to do one other thing while we're talking. I'm going to show you how I, how I do like Mary Jane's massive hair. Alright, let's fix this. There we go. And see, this one looks way off, but let me turn off the original pencils because I think that's what made me think they're off. Yeah, I don't know. I think this one can be curved a little bit nicer. I don't like the curve on this one quite yet. There we go. That's a much better curve. See, I like that better. And see, I might be going into way too much detail on this. Way too much detail. I don't know. I think that level of detail pays off when you look at it. Because the chances are, and this is a big, huge chance, chances are, you're not going to see it. I mean, this is, this is like 300 resolution, 300 times the size. If even at 100, that's not the way, it, well, let's see. Even at 100, that's pretty much not how you're going to see it. That, that, well, that might be the same size as a comic book. Let me pull up a comic book. Yeah, that's about the right size of a comic book, and this can be trimmed off, so... You're only going to see it from this distance, so from this distance you're not going to see that much detail. Because I mean, when you get this close, I mean, you're seeing lines that will probably never be seen by the average reader. That's 100 right there, so this mass of lines is just going to be read as a mass of gray shading. So, you know, you probably are not going to even notice it. So, sometimes it doesn't pay to be that detailed. 